Hello everyone, this is a ZBrush tutorial for hollowing out models for SLA and DLP printing, specifically using ZBrush 4R8 and Live Boolean. Uh, here's our model we're going to be working on. Um, I have some of these subtools set up as Dynamesh subdivisions. So if I turn that on, you can see the eyes get hollowed out and the mouth. Now, typically, um, when combining subtools for 3D printing, these would all be Dynamesh together into a single mesh, but with 4R8, um, a quicker and cleaner method is using Live Boolean. So if you have your Live Boolean turned on, you go down to Subtool menu and go to Boolean and click Make Boolean Mesh, and that will combine all your tutor or all your subtools that are under one of these arrows uh, into one tool. If you need a Live Boolean tutorial there are others online this one is specifically aimed towards hollowing out models so after clicking on make boolean mesh uh, it'll take a little bit to calculate and combine everything together now the advantages of this over dynamesh is that dynamesh will go over the entire model and create a new topology over everything which leads to a loss of detail in quite a few areas and live boolean will only affect the areas where subtools are intersecting. So if you look here, we still have a, a difference in model density between this eyebrow part and the face, but where they touch is where Live Boolean will uh, alter the mesh and make everything one cohesive part. Now to hollow out this, um, the, the easiest way would be to duplicate the mesh and then dynamesh that one down to a lower resolution probably about 400 for this model uh, this is designed to be a pendant uh, but that's okay so you can see with that dynamesh there's a quite large loss of detail compared to the original but that is okay because we're just going to be using this as a cutting tool essentially. So after we have that created we need to create holes for where our vents will be in our eventual printed model and I generally find the feet can be a good place to put them depending how you're orientating your print on the printer. Um, this guy will probably just be uh, tilted back sort of like this so I can put the holes right in the feet and there won't be any suction issues or problems occurring because of that. So I'll put that right there. Slide it up into the foot a little bit, duplicate it, slide it over. Because having two holes will allow um, ventilation to be a little bit easier. So we have those in place, and now we have to switch those to a subtraction subtool. Take this Dynamesh, merge it down. And now we need to create these shells. So you go to Dynamesh, Create Shell, and I generally go about 9 or 10. It is um, It depends on your model thickness. This guy is about 40 millimeters tall, but uh, 10 should be good. And Create Shell. This usually takes uh, a fair amount of time to calculate, which is why I use a fairly low resolution Dynamesh to work off of. But um, yeah, just wait for it to uh, work it out. There we go. Now you can see our model is hollowed out. And now we need to separate this interior hollow from the exterior. And usually I would try and separate these by polygroup. But you can see the interior has several different polygroups and it's kind of a mess. So the easiest way to separate these is just to turn on symmetry for this, I think and mask off just on the outside of this hole. Uh, 
Uh, sharpen that. Invert. Hide part. Delete hidden. And then auto group. Now this will separate the exterior from the interior. Hide the exterior. Delete hidden again. Close holes. And then flip your mesh. And now we have this isolated interior. Which you can see there are a few floaty bits which we do not want. So we'll cut that off. This tail, as you can see, has this really thin part here. And so we're just going to remove this. Uh, let's do hide part, delete hidden, close holes, auto group, select that one alone, delete hidden. And now that tail will end up being a solid part, but it's really not that much resin, so it's um, fairly acceptable. Now we need to extend these foot columns just a bit, so they will cut into our other model. Now this is fairly um, jagged and sharp, which can cause some issues with supports for 3D printing. So we're going to do a clay polish and another clay polish. And that looks pretty good. Now we are going to take this and boolean this part out of our detailed model. So this way we have a hollowed out version of our original model without altering any of the exterior detail. And once you have those selected, put this as a dynamic uh, subtraction. Boolean your mesh together. Which, as always, takes a little bit of time to calculate, but it's not too terrible. And there we have our model with high detailed exterior with a lower res interior, hollowed out, and almost ready to print. Um, the only other thing I would do now is possibly do a decimation to cut down the amount of detail, because Three and a half million polygons is a little bit heavy for most 3D printing, but you can also check um, how the model looks by using a cube and turning it into a uh, Boolean subdivision. You can see the wall thickness throughout the entire model. And you can preview if there's any uh, parts that might be too thin, but there shouldn't be. Sometimes clay polish can thin out some areas a little bit much where you might want to thicken the walls up, but other than that, it's done and good to go. Send it to Preform or whatever 3D printing program you've got, and you're good. If you have any questions or need anything clarified, just leave a comment in the section below, and I will do my best to help you. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.